Hello, um, I'm going to try and teach you guys a little bit about FM synthesis. My name is David, I sometimes write music as Laserbeat. If you ever used a Mega Drive or a, a Yamaha DX synthesizer or you had a Sound Blaster card in the kind of 90s, you've probably used FM synthesis. If you've looked around on the internet, there seem to be two different types of uh, tutorial for it. At one end, you've got really, really complicated mathematics, which I don't really understand. And at the other end, you have someone who'll say, yeah, FM sounds cold and brittle. Um, it's really good at bell sounds. It's really good at electric pianos. And it sucks at everything else. So just experiment and see what you got. And those two things aren't super helpful, um, unless you're really good at maths or you really like experimenting. I'm going to try and do something a bit more in the middle. Um, as a kind of beginner's guide or an introduction to FM synthesis, um, as you can maybe see. We're going to use three tools. We're going to use Notepad, which is awesome. Um, we're going to use Renoise, which is awesome. And we're going to use VGM Maker, which is by uh, Shiru, as you can see here. And he's awesome. He's very, very active. And VGM Maker kind of sounds a lot like a Mega Drive. Um, one of the problems with FM is when you look at FM synthesis, you have loads and loads and loads of really kind of intimidating vocabulary. So you've got like algorithms and envelopes and multipliers and um, all of these different things going on. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is, and, and you do need to know this stuff, it's all really important. You need a good grounding in it to understand FM. Um, but when you read the manual for the DX7 or something, it will throw loads of vocabulary at you at the same time, loads of fairly complex ideas, and then say, okay, now go and make sounds. So we're going to take just a couple of bits of vocabulary at a time, um, make sure we've got a fairly good foundation with everything before we move on. Um, most FM synthesizers, well, all FM synthesizers, have more than one waveform combined in some way to make a sound. Um, the most common waveform that FM synthesizers have is a uh, sine wave, which we're going to look at in Renoise. Sine waves go kind of up and then down and then up again. And I don't want to draw anything here. So I'm just going to play this for you. Oh, sorry, play two at the same time. That's our sine wave, so you can see it's going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Also, if you look at the top here, we've got um, uh, levels. So this is the volume. Um, that's going to become important, so remember that. Um, this sound by itself is kind of boring. Just on, off. That's about it. So we want to be able to modify this sound to make it a bit more interesting and a bit more useful. Um, the way we do that is with something called envelopes. Um, there's a really good chance that you guys already know what envelopes are but you need a really, really good understanding of them or FM gets completely baffling because you could end up using six envelopes at the same time where one tiny little change will affect your whole sound. Um, so let's have a look at an envelope. Um, an envelope is an arbitrary signal that you can apply to a sound to change it in some way. So let's have a quick look. This is our sound. The volume, the volume is very consistent up here. What we want to do is we want to make this quieter. So we're going to use a volume envelope to make the sound go from very loud here to very quiet and eventually disappear. So if you look down here, you can see I've got a little triangle. This represents like the maximum volume. This represents the minimum volume. And um, on the horizontal, you've got time. So let's turn the envelope on and see what happens. As we go through time, the sound gets smaller and the level drops. If you look up the top, level drops, which is great. Um, using um, envelopes for volume is really, really common, but you can also apply them to other things, um, which is going to become relevant a little bit later. Um, very quickly, if you have a look up at the top, there's these two green bars. The top green bar is the left-hand side. The bottom bar is the right-hand side. So let's um, move down a little bit, and let's turn on an envelope which will affect the panning. So if you look here, the shape, actually let's make that bigger. So 
yeah, so the shape of this envelope is just, just going down, so from maximum to minimum volume in this case. Um, let's look at the panning envelope. This is basically the same, same shape, but it's going from far left. This is center, this is far right, so let's play that, see what happens. So if you look at your left and right spectrums up here, sorry, scopes up here, you can see we're panning from one to the other. Um, you can also apply it to other things. So you can apply envelopes to other things, for example, pitch. Um, so let's turn on this pitch envelope. Um, have a think about what, what you predict will happen. So we've got very high noise, very low. What kind of sound do you think we're going to get? Let's find out. So you've got going from very high pitch to very low pitch, kind of quickly. Um, one of the really big problems with, well, not big problems specifically, but one of the challenges with FM, it doesn't have envelopes that can be applied to pitch, which makes it a little bit difficult to make drums. But it's okay, we can get around that, that's no problem. Um, so let's have a look at um, volume again. Let's turn off our pitch envelope. Let's go turn off the panning envelope. Let's go to volume. Let's say, for example, we want to go from maximum to minimum volume, because remember we're looking at volume here, uh, slower. So we can move this further back. Let's listen again. What, what do you think is going to happen? Much, much slower. Much, much, much slower. Let's try again. What do you think is going to happen here? Very fast. So what we've effectively got is an arbitrary signal that's being applied to the volume of the sound. Um, it starts at zero, instantly goes to the maximum, and then it very slowly goes to the minimum. Um, envelopes can get much more complicated than this, but this is um, what we're going to use to start with. So let's call this first one the attack rate. Um, if the attack rate is at its maximum, the sound begins instantaneously. Um, let's call the... Okay, let's just, let's just try this. If we drop here, remember this represents the total level of the sound, we should get a much quieter sound. Yeah, so that's quieter. There you go. So let's call this the total level. Um, let's call the speed that the sound begins the attack rate. Let, let's try just for example. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Ah, sorry, sorry, making this more confusing. Than this. And I've totally killed my Okay, so let's call this kind of the beginning of the sound. Uh, this is the total level that we reach, and this is going back to zero. So, total level. The speed that we reach the total level is going to be called the attack rate and the speed that we go back to silence is going to be called the sustain rate. So let's play this. Uh, again, quickly have a think about what you predict will happen. So we get to maximum volume kind of quickly, and then we fade out kind of slowly. Um, the FM software that we're going to be using assigns a value of 0 to 31 to attack rate and sustain rate. Um, 31 is maximum, and 0 is minimum. So this would represent an attack rate of 31, so it's instantaneous. I'm oh, sorry, it's not quite instantaneous, because I've done this in a stupid way. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, so that would represent an attack rate of 31, because it's instantaneous. And this sustain rate is kind of slow. So this could be maybe 15 or something. Um, let's say just for example, we don't want the sound to finish ever. So this would be a sustain rate of zero. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, we actually reached the end of the sound. We actually reached the end of our envelope, but here the sound will just continue going ever at the same volume. Um, let's try increasing the sustain rate to the maybe um, this would be, I don't know, 25 or something. Okay, so let's have a look at our FM software. This is VGM Maker again. Loads of complicated stuff. We're just going to be looking at this bottom strip here. Okay, 
So um, this is our sine wave. Um, this is actually number four. So if you look at the algorithm in the top right, you can see that number four is green. Uh, green is a wave that makes a sound. Um, actually, let's let's just make a couple of quick notes. So this is our intro to FM synthesis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, a wave that makes a sound is called a carrier. Um, TL or total level. is the maximum volume a sound reaches. AR, or attack rate, how fast the maximum volume. Sustain rate is how fast to silence. Um, the software we're using kind of looks a lot like a Mega Drive, and it's a bit odd because it says 127 is the lowest volume and 0 is the highest volume, so it's a bit backwards. Um, attack rate makes a bit more sense. Attack rate goes from 0 being um, never to 31 being instantaneous, and uh, sustain rate is the same. 0 is never, so it never reaches silence. 31 is instantaneous. Let's just have a super quick look at our uh, FM machine and see what we can do. So if you look here, our total level for carrier number four is zero, which means it's maximum. I'm just going to drop it quickly. Uh, look at the little red box. You can see what happens. It disappears. Um, if you look here, our attack rate, AR, is 31. So that's instant. And our sustain rate is 10. So it's um, going from maximum volume down to nothing kind of quickly. So let's play a quick sound. You can hear maximum volume down to nothing. Again, this is a sine wave because the Mega Drive only has sine waves. Um, let's decrease the sustain rate a little bit. The sound will now take longer to disappear. Let's increase the sustain rate. Again, have a think about what you predict will happen. Um, very short sound, probably. Just a quick note about VGM Maker. The Sorry, my mouse is a bit dodgy. Sometimes the values that you have can continue going, but you can't really see what's happening very clearly um, in the little window here. So if we go all the way up to 31, you'll probably just hear a little click go down a bit. You can't actually see any change here really, but you'll notice that the sound starts to change. And all we're doing here is adjusting the sustain rate. So if you look up here we have SR, which is sustain rate. Okay, that is the end of the first part of my tutorial. Thank you very much. What we're going to do uh, next is look at how to make a kick drum using only wave uh, sine waves with no pitch envelope, which is uh, not actually that hard. But thank you very much.